Let's do a lab. In this lab, we're going to build a hypothesis test and confidence interval calculator for a single proportion. But first, let's go ahead and look at some of the, and remind ourselves of some of the formulas that we've looked at in the past. So for a confidence interval, we need a margin of error. And that margin of error is the multiplier, in this case, a z from a normal distribution, a z multiplier, times the standard error of p hat, where the standard error of p hat is the square root of p hat q hat, where q hat is just one minus p hat, divided by the total sample size, which is n. Great, that's for the confidence interval. And remember for the hypothesis test, we need a step three test statistic. And that uh, test statistic is also uh, with respect to a normal distribution, a z, and it is p hat minus p, where p is the assumed value of the proportion under the null hypothesis, p hat minus p divided by the square root of pq divided by n. And notice that this is still the uh, standard error of p hat, but it is, um, it's p and q instead of p hat and q hat because we're gonna use the assumed value under the null hypothesis. We're gonna use the same p as that's, that's there. We're assuming a value for p under the null, so that's why this is going to be p and then one minus p, which we call q divided by n. So remember those as we're going forward and let's start building our calculator. Awesome. So uh, here I encourage you to use a lot of style. Um, it's really what life's all about. So make yours, um, uh, make gives yours the most creativity, artistic, however, whatever colors you like, whatever fonts you like. I'm just going to start mine right now. So CI and hypothesis testing hypothesis test calculator for a proportion and I like exclamation marks and I'll click out and click back in and so then I can make that bold I'll pump that up to 26 ish again uh, I'll turn mine blue that looks cool whatever you like but we do need to title it so all right, so now we're gonna to try to stay in the same cell so we can all stay together. Let's get on down to C3. And in C3, I'm gonna build a box here. So I'm gonna make that five wide. So I'm already on one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna right click and bring up a menu in there and format cells. I'm gonna put a border around this and I want it to be a thick border. And uh, so I'll put the thick line there and I'll hit click the outline and I can build a nice little thick border. And this is going to be data. So I'll have data and then I'll have X and then I'll skip a space and put in where X is the number of successes and N is your total sample size. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all those and then I can bold them and pump them up all at once. Let's make that 20, let's say. And actually inside of X here, I'll put the equal sign and then for N, I'll put the equal sign so we can get that there in the formula bar. So just clicking on that and that comes up in here and I can edit it however I like. And then I'm also gonna write justify these. So I'll bring them over there. You'll see why I'm gonna do this in a second. Actually, I'll tell you now, because we're gonna put a number in here and we're gonna put a number in here. And that's how we're gonna get the inputs into our calculator. So that's the data. So um, then if you'd come down here to A5, so in A5, I'm gonna write, actually, we're gonna create another box, another rectangle. So we'll make this 11 tall. So I'm already in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, And I'm gonna go over five. One, two, three, four, five. So let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and we're over five. I'm gonna put a box around those. So right click, bring up the menu, format cells, uh, make your uh, Excel, um, so your uh, border, your big border and outline it. And great, and now I've got this little section of my spreadsheet that I'm gonna say is reserved for the confidence interval inputs and outputs. So I'll put in here confidence interval, I'll click back out and click back in, and we'll bold that, and I'm gonna make my uh, A column there a little bit wider so that I can fit all that on there, on the confidence interval. So then down, I'm gonna skip to a, a line and go to uh, A7, and we'll put in input. And once again, I'm gonna bold it and my input here is going to be the confidence. We of course have to tell our confidence interval what confidence we want to have it. And we're gonna remind ourselves that that needs to be input here as a decimal. So we're gonna input that as a decimal. I'll just give it a default value, say 0.95. And those are really my inputs. So now I'm gonna come over here to E7 
and I'm going to put in output. And in the output, we're going to have alpha. We'll call that an output. An, uh, an output. We're going to have p hat, our sample proportion. We're going to have q hat, which is 1 minus p hat. We're going to have se of p hat. And we are going to have, of course, a multiplier. And of course, with those two, if we multiply those two together, we'll have a margin of error. And we will fill those in here right now. Let's go ahead. So let's uh, actually make this output here bold. And we'll have alpha. So what is alpha? Well, using our Excel skills, we'll say alpha equals 1 minus, and we can just click on this or type it in B8. Right? That's all alpha is. And you can verify, whoops, put in B8 and hit enter. And that's great. So if I made this 0.99, then alpha would be 0.01. If I made it 0.90, then alpha would be 0.1, so on and so forth. So I'm going to leave it back at 0.95, alpha is 0.05. So p hat. So p hat now is simply x divided by n. So whatever these values are, I'm going to put an equal sign. Whatever value comes up in here, divided by, because I'm going to put those in in a minute, whatever value comes in there. Right? It's just this value, the number of successes, divided by the total sample size. That's all p hat is. And so it's dividing by zero because it doesn't have a number in here right now. But let's just put some sample numbers in here. Let's just say I had two successes and 10, a total sample size of 10. So that, of course, would be 0.2. And so I'll go to q hat. And q hat is 1 minus p hat. And so p hat is here in f. Uh, 9 so I can click on that notice f9 comes up in there or you can just type in f9 but of course if this is uh, this is say 7 out of 10 then that's 0.7 and that's 0.3 so on and so forth so um, fantastic so se our se remember uh, for going back here our se for our confidence interval is the square root of p hat q hat divided by n so this will be equal to SQRT, that's the square root function, P hat, Q hat. So I'm going to say P hat times Q hat. And then I'm going to divide all that by N, which is in G3. I'm going to close off my square root. And there is my SEP hat. That's it. And then my multiplier. Okay, so now recall, a multiplier is a percentile from a normal distribution. And since this is a two-sided confidence interval, we're going to divide alpha by two. Remember, this is z alpha over two. But I always want this number to be positive. So there's a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, I'll simply say, let's go ahead and do, we know we're gonna have to do norm dot inverse, right? And we'll just build this from the ground up. So I'm gonna put in alpha over two. So alpha over two is alpha F8 divided by two, comma, zero, comma, one. But look what happens when I do that. We'll see a very familiar number, but it has the wrong sign, right? That's about 1.96, but it's negative 1.96. So what we can do here is just come up to the formula bar while we're highlighted in the cell, come up to the formula bar, uh, bar and just do absolute value ABS of that number. And then, of course, we'll get the absolute value of that. Fantastic. So, um, so now we need the margin of error. And the margin of error, notice, is just the multiplier times the standard error. So here we go. Margin of error is just equal to, put the equal sign, the margin of error, F12, times the standard error, which is F11. And we've got our margin of error. So we've got almost everything we need to get our confidence interval. We actually do have everything we need. We just need to actually come up with a confidence interval. So what we're going to do is um, put our confidence interval down here. So I'm going to put in A14. This is going to be cool because we're going to customize the label for our confidence intervals. Because if I change this to 99%, I want it to say a 99% confidence interval. So I'm going to say this equals whatever's in B8. So that equals B8. And so now, of course, whoops, B8, and then hit enter. And it'll put 0.95. But I don't want to say a 0.95 confidence interval. I want to say a 95% confidence interval. So whatever I put in here, of course, 0.99. It's going to come up in here. If I put 0 0.90, it's going to come up in here. Great. I put 0 0.95, it's going to come up in there. So what I'm going to do next is 
uh, uh, format it. So I'm going to highlight the cell and bring up the uh, menu and I'm going to format the cell. It's probably still on border over here. So I'm going to come over to number. We've done this before. We're going to make it a percentage. And if you do the percentage, then it'll say 95%. And if you again change it to 9, uh, 0.99, then it'll be 99%. Great. So um, I'm going to then put in here confidence interval and that's in B14. So now no matter what I put in here, this will be a whatever percent confidence interval. And then we need to actually put the confidence interval. So right under here in A15, I'm going to put the parentheses and I'm going to write justify it. So we'll write justify this guy to get it over there. And just to make things complete, I'll put the left percent, uh, uh, the right, sorry, this is the left parenthesis and this is the right parenthesis and we'll put that in there and then my confidence interval is going to go in here well what is the lower limit of the confidence interval it's simply equal to the estimate which is p hat minus the margin of error pretty simple after you've got all those pieces and then the uh, upper limit is just equal to p hat plus the margin of error oh, plus the margin of error and hit enter and you hit enter and we see, okay, well, there is the uh, margin of error for, uh, that's the confidence interval uh, for these particular statistics. If I had seven out of 10, um, then my confidence interval would be 0.32 to 1.07, noting that a, uh, um, a proportion can't be bigger than one. So I would probably just truncate that to one. But anyhow, we'll, uh, we'll verify that here. Notice if I made a 95% confidence interval, those uh, would become narrower so on and so forth. So uh, let's go ahead and verify this actually. So if I flip back over here, we'll see an example that we've done before. So um, this is a, a breakout problem we did for a four class assignment. We had 77 students polled. We had 24 found the use of cloning humans acceptable and 53 found uh, the use of cloning of humans unacceptable. And so what we did is we came up with all, we did a hypothesis test that we'll check here in a second. And then we came up with our confidence interval. So let's verify this confidence interval. We came up with a confidence interval for the true proportion of SMU students, which this wasn't a random sample, but um, a, uh, uh, the 95% the, uh, confidence interval for the true proportion of students that um, find cloning acceptable was 20.82 to 41.51. So let's verify that. So I'll flip back over here, remembering 24 and 77. That should be all we need. So I'll do 24 in here, because that's the number of successes we had, out of 77 possible. And we do that. We've got our confidence. Remember, it was a 95% confidence interval, so I put in 0.95. So my 95% confidence interval is uh, 0.2 to 0.41, which is what we had in the last one. So we'll verify that. 0.2 to 0.4, or 20%. So 0.2 to 0.41, or 20% to 41%. So um, just to kind of finish off the formatting here, we'll go ahead and make those bold. And there is a confidence interval calculator for a proportion. That's awesome. So the next step that we're gonna do here is make a hypothesis test. And so for this hypothesis test, we'll make this nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll go ahead and make this five wide. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> so I'll right click on that and go to format cells looks great awesome and remember make this as stylish as you like uh, so i'll go over here to the border and add the border and i'll put the on outline and just like we had now we've got a little section over here for hypothesis test so this is hypothesis test i'll click out click back in so that i can make it bold and let's uh, put the inputs in there. So I've got input, click out, click, click back in. And my inputs now are going to be uh, HO, P equals, HO, P equals, and I'll make this uh, right justified. So I'll click out, click back in, I'll make that right justified. And actually I'll bold it too, why not? And then down here, yeah, let's not bold it. You can do whatever you like. I'm not going to bold mine because we bolded the input to set it apart. So here I'm going to make HA and HA is P equals. And you can do a couple of things here. You could insert 
Um, actually, it looks like you can't insert there, so you can only do it one way. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, if you're on a Mac, you can hit Option and then the Equal button, and that'll give you the Not Equal sign. And uh, if you're on a PC, you might have to figure out how to put that Not Equal sign. If you're on a PC and you can't figure it out, you can a lot of times actually go over here to Symbol, and you'll see all these different symbols, and you might be able to find it in there. Technical symbols. So again, if you're on the Mac, just hit Option Equal Sign. Um, and if not, for this one, oftentimes you can bring it up in there, but I'm almost certain it's in there somewhere, but, but you might have to spend some time finding it. Another way you can do it if you're on a PC is in um, coding, if, you're, if you talk amongst coders, uh, you can just hit uh, exclamation mark equals. And that is kind of an international symbol for not equal. It's actually a coding symbol for not equal. So you put exclamation mark equal sign, that means not equal. But I have a Mac, I'm gonna hit option equals, that puts in the non equal sign, and I'm ready to go. I'm gonna come over here and write justify it, just like that. And now I've got some inputs. We know that those are inputs. And then of course I'm gonna input my alpha uh, and I'll uh, go ahead and write justify that. And if we write justify that, um, I'll just go ahead and put in 0.05. Great, so now we need the outputs. And so for the output, I'll click out, click back in so I can bold it. And let's list our outputs. So our outputs are gonna be, of course, P hat. And our outputs are also going to be Let's go ahead and make that Q hat. Well, we'll we, we know we've got Q hat. We don't need to explicitly say it. Let's make a critical value though. We know we need that for step two and I'll make this a little bit wider. And I need the SE of P hat. Recalling we're gonna calculate a little bit differently here using P and Q instead of P hat and Q hat for the SE of P hat. Um, I'm gonna have a Z statistic in the end and I'm also gonna have a p-value because this is hypothesis test. I got step one, two, three, and four in here. So that is awesome. And let's start putting some stuff in. So let's go ahead and try and, um, and match this to the problem that we had before. So I'm gonna flip back on over here. Notice that here we were testing a majority. And in a majority we're testing either above 0.5 or less than majority is less than 0.5. So our value that we want to test of greater than or less than here is 0.5. So I'm going to put that in here. So for P hat, I'm going to, or for P, I'm testing HO, P equals 0.5 versus HA, there's either or there's less than majority. Great, so now I can compare those answers. So P hat's the same way, P hat equals, just kind of duplicating it there. So P hat is E3 divided by G3 and we do that and we've got P hat and our critical value here is equal to um, uh, Remember the critical value and the multiplier are the same, but we'll go ahead and uh, redo that here. So that'll be norm dot inverse Oops, don't hit equals. I always do that hit uh, norm Dot inverse and then open parentheses. I need alpha divided by two. So that's alpha divided by two and just like that and that oh that's i10 in there D divided by two comma zero comma one and if we do that we get this negative uh, 1.96 it's really plus or minus so um, actually what i'll do here is make my critical value a little bit wider and in here i'm going to put plus minus so then I'll know that that's plus and minus. And I'll go back in here and remember to make this, I'll just make this the absolute value to make that always positive. So when I look at it, it says, oh, okay, the critical value is plus or minus this two-sided test, 1.96 or 1.9599, very close to 1.96. So, um, so great, so now we've made that clear. Uh, SEP hat is equal to this time SQRT. Let's flip back over here and go back up we come back here, remember that this is our test statistic. Um, and so for our test statistic, we're gonna divide by the standard error of P hat. And now we're, instead of P, P hat Q hat, we're gonna use PQ. So in here, I'm gonna say open parentheses. And P, what are we using, what are we assuming for P? Well, it's right here, P equals 0.5. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that number uh, times um, one minus that number 
so that will be uh, 1 minus uh, 0.5. Of course, we could do that in our head, but we want to be able to change that number. So that's uh, I8 uh, P hat, 1 minus P hat, divided by N, which is here in G3. And we'll close all that off, and we get an SEP hat here. And remember, you can highlight the uh, formula bar up here to see to make sure it's gathering what you want. So this is, again, just double checking it. That's P, that's Q, that's N, and that's the square root. Looks good to me. So now we're going to come down here to the Z statistic. We're calling what we have. Here's our Z. Now we're just going to take P hat minus P and the square root of that uh, SE. So this will be Z equals, I'll use my quantities here, P hat minus P, close parentheses, divided by SE P hat. That's exactly what it is. And that's my Z statistic. And then we'll need a P value. So that's a negative three, negative 3.3. Let's go ahead and double check that so far. So if I come back down to my hypothesis test here, we'll see we're right on target. So, so far we said, okay, that's our, we inputted these. So this is P equals 0.5 and P not equal to 0.5. Our critical value is plus or minus 1.96. Looks good. And our Z score, our Z statistic is negative 3.3. And that looks like what we have here, negative 3.304. And so we're uh, we're confident now that the SE was calculated correctly, and we've got our we've got step one, two, and three. So what about the p-value? The p-value is the probability of being as extreme or more extreme than what was observed under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. And our z statistic is sitting here at negative 3.3. So we need to be clever here because we're going to need to multiply this by two. So. Um, here be very careful when typing this in so what we're going to do is say equals and then i'm always going to have um, the function in excel look up the left tail probability it's going to look at a value to the left which is no big deal here because this one's already negative three but i want it to always be negative so um, what i'm going to put in here for the p value is how can i always get that to be negative and then i'll multiply it by two because whatever it is on the left tail, if I multiply it by two, that'll be the total left and right tail together. So I'm gonna say norm.dist, if you remember that function, norm.dist, and then I'm gonna put in the negative absolute value of the uh, test statistic here. And note what that's going to do. That's going to, if, if the test statistic is negative, its absolute value is going to make it positive, and then that negative sign is going to make it negative. But then if the uh, z-score is positive, then absolute value isn't going to change it. It's going to keep it positive, and that negative sign is going to make it negative. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm always looking for that left tail probability on this p-value, so I can multiply it by 2. So I'm going to do this uh, 0. If you draw and shade that, it'll make a lot of sense. So that, again, is going to give us half the p-value. Oh, and recall, I've got to put in the x, the mean. I'm putting a mean of 0 because this is a z-score. It has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, but I also need to tell it cum cumulative to the left. So I'm going to always put that 1 in there. So it reminded me that I had an error in there. So I'm going to hit equals. Now this is half the p-value. If you look at the, if you can imagine here, a normal distribution, um, it's going to be just the left tail because I looked at that negative number all the way to negative infinity, and I need to multiply that by 2. So I'm going to squeak in here 2 times that, and there is my p-value. So that p-value should be about 0 .00095025. Uh, so we'll come back over here and verify that. That was about right, 0 .0095. So um, great. So that is our, um, that's our p-value calculation. You might have to think about that for a little bit, but I encourage you to draw and shade it, and you'll see that if you always want that left, uh, that left one so you can multiply the left area by 2, that's a good way to do it. Awesome. So now we have our uh, confidence interval calculator and our hypothesis testing calculator. So the uh, last thing that I want to do, well, one of the last things I want to do, of course, not quite the last thing, is um, I'd like to add a plot to this because plots always make things a little bit nicer. So I'm going to down here, well, we've already got p hat. So yeah, so what I'll do is we already have p hat. So I'm just gonna make a really simple 
Uh, but again, style it up as much as you want. Um, a really simple uh, plot. So I'm just going to highlight P hat and 0.311. I'm going to come over here to insert and I'm going to go to this column chart up here. And in that column chart, I'm going to select, we'll show a couple of different ways to do this, but I just select that one and it gives me um, this guy. It gives me this chart and that's great. So that's basically what I want to notice that it's 0.311, so that's 0.311. So we're going to um, customize this plot a little bit. And I'm going to customize it so that, uh, first of all, up here, notice this was, and you'll have to add this, um, this title every time to make, it, to make it meaningful, but this was the uh, cloning of humans being acceptable in our class. So this is uh, proportion of uh, SMU students uh, that feel the cloning cloning of humans is acceptable. Great. So I've got a nice little title. Now what we want to do is really note that this proportion is the proportion of acceptable. That's what we've called a success is um, what is the, you know, we, we have to really say with respect to what we're talking about this proportion. This is the proportion of acceptable. So I don't want it to be a one down here. So basically what I'm going to do is come up here to uh, select data. This is a little cryptic, but select data, horizontal category access labels. I'm going to put in uh, acceptable 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 and I'll hit OK and acceptable comes in here so now it's it's pretty um, it's pretty cool it uh, it's pretty descriptive but what I'd also like to do is add error bars because we know that this that the actual estimate isn't 0.311 or estimates 0.311 but it's not likely that the actual proportion is 31 percent so um, so what we're going to do is use this margin of error and so what I can do is come over here and add a chart element. And when I add a chart element, you'll see error bars. And in error bars, I'll just click on uh, more error bar options. Good. So if you do that, then it gives us an error bar up here. So it says, hey, it's, this is my best estimate, the top of the box. But it could be low here. It could be high there. And I can barely see it. So first thing I'm going to do is call it a solid line. And I'm going to make it red. So we'll make that red. And then that's not quite thick enough for me, so I'm going to make it a little bit uh, thicker with a 1.75, whatever you like. And then I'm going to customize its length. So it's automatically um, making a fixed value of 0.05 in there. But what I'm going to do is make it custom. Or I'm sorry, I'm not going to make it custom. I'm going to make it fixed value, and I'm going to make that fixed value my margin of error, which is 0.1034. 0.1035, So I'm just using, that's what my margin of error is, right? I think it's plausible that that value could be as high as here. This is my confidence interval, essentially. That error bar there is this confidence interval. It goes from 0.2 uh, uh, all the way to 0.41. Oh, actually, ooh, that's a good point. So what we'd like to do, yeah, no, that's the margin of error. That's what exactly what we should have it, uh, have it be. So that is what we're going to do there. And we will hit enter, and there it goes. So it took a second for it to go up, but there it is, up to 0 0.41, and go down here to 0 0.20. Great. So I think that's a, that's a pretty cool looking um, option there. But just um, to give you something to kind of mess around with is, uh, let's make one more plot, just because I'm, feeling creative here. Uh, so you can have that plot, but let's, if we start another plot, let's say we insert this time and we do maybe like one of these 3D column plots. So autom automatically that kind of looks a little cooler. I'm gonna go ahead and steal this title so I don't have to retype it. So I'm just copying and pasting that title and you can make this uh, plot a little bit bigger. I think that looks pretty cool. And then if you are in an XLSX file so if you've brought this up more than likely everyone is you've got these um, under chart design you've got these different kind of automatically 
formatted ones. So those look pretty cool. That one looks pretty cool. You can have it however you like. The only thing that's the problem with this is that you can't do error bars on it. I think that's a pity, but it hasn't been programmed yet, so it can do error bars. But you can do all these kind of cool looking ones. I'm gonna keep this one. Notice that it gives the 0 0.31 on top there. That's kind of cool. It still needs a uh, to say acceptable on the bottom so that everyone knows that that's what you're measuring. This is the proportion of acceptable. Acceptable. And we'll click OK. And so acceptable comes up down here. I've got my plot right there. And that's a pretty cool looking chart that happens pretty darn quick. So you can customize however you like. Note, though, that... Um, that if I change this, if we're like update this and so, oh, hey, actually, you know what? Um, we took another sample and this time only 20 came up to be um, found it acceptable. Then I'd click on that and this changes. These both automatically change a little bit. Um, so notice now it's 0.25. So uh, pretty cool to have those kind of dynamic plots. Notice that we hard coded the margin of error. So that's not gonna, uh, that's not looking at this one. So if you change that, that's going to change a little bit. You've got to hard code that margin of error in there, but great work. So um, what I would love for us to do next then is uh, we're going to do a quick example and I'll show you what to turn in. So that's our, our confidence interval calculator. I'm going to come back over here. Recall that we in breakout two last week, we did um, the a coronavirus um, fatality rate. Uh, estimator. And at that time, there were 5,110 deaths, 215,300 coronavirus cases. And I'll just put the results of our analysis up there. So we could verify these two. In fact, let's do it. So P was um, 0.028. So we can go ahead and do that. So P here, this is just how you'd use it, 0.028. And my alternative hypothesis is 0.028. And since you know, actually, let's improve ours a little bit. Since you know that these are going to be the same number, you don't have to type that in each time. Let's just get rid of that and say equals whatever this is and hit enter. And so now whenever I change this to 0.7, that changes to 0.7. I want it to be 0.028. Great, we just made it better. So we wanted that to be 2.8% and I've hard coded this now to be 2.8% and uh, let's keep going. So what was our data? We had 215,300. So that's our N, 215,300. And our X was 510, or 5,110. So that is 5,110. And uh, you can see that our, uh, we can see that our plots here have adjusted themselves. Of course, the margin of error bars here need some adjusting. We'll adjust those in a second. But, um, but we've got a very small proportion, or in fact, relatively speaking, a very large proportion, larger than we'd like it to be, but, um, but that's reflecting that uh, P hat of 2.3%. And that's what it was back in the day, back when we were, when we were looking at this back in on April 2nd. So, um, so what we would like is we said, okay, let's get a 95% confidence interval. Oh, and let's verify these numbers. So we had a, a Z statistic of negative 12, uh, because our p value here, our, sorry, our p hat was 2.3% and we were testing 2.8%. So um, there's our z statistic was a negative 11.99, which is basically 11 uh, is negative 12. Our p value is super duper small. Notice that it's actually calculating it here. Unlike our calculator, it, which said zero, this is actually just right, very, very, very close to zero. That's 0.32 zeros of decimal than 32 zeros than 365. So very, very close to zero. Very, very unlikely that we would get something this uh, small if 2.8 was the real percentage, was the real proportion. So great, and so we said 95%, so we go through there and we've got about 2.3% to 2.4%, which is what we have here, 2.3% to 2.4%, and that's how we would use our calculator. And we see that our margin of error here is very small, 0.0006. So if we were to adjust this, we would um, just kind of double click on that. And down here, we'd say that this is 0 0.00, what was it? Whoops, I've got it right there, 0 .0, three zeros and a six. So then we do that, hit enter. And now we've got uh, a more accurate one, or at least easy, reasonable, e easy, more easily readable. But what I'll also suggest that we do here is notice that this doesn't start at zero. So it's kind of a bigger uh, plot here because it doesn't start at zero and you might want to keep that. 
I always think it's nice to have it at zero, or at least to try to have that um, x act the y axis start at zero. But we're in such small numbers here that it may be hard to read. So let's try it out. Uh, we're just going to try that out on point here. So here we go. So the minimum, I might just hard code the minimum here to be zero. And if I do that, I um, guess I've got here uh, automatic horizontal axis crosses at, I guess we can do that. We can have this cross at zero. And you kind of see what happens. So you've got to adjust these a little bit sometimes. But notice that if I have the, if I have it start at zero, it's saying, hey, here, you know, see our error bars are just super tiny. So there's a couple things you could do. You could go back to, to kind of zooming in on the y-axis here, or you can make your plot a little bit taller, right? Which might kind of show the relative, uh, the error to your, to the estimate. So there's a lot of different ways to, uh, to make this plot. So I'll let you kind of play around with that, but that's kind of the idea with the plot. But what we'd like to do in the end here is, uh, first of all, change this because this, this title is now the um, estimated uh, fatality rate, fatality rate of COVID-19 in the US um, on four, four to, 20. And that's what it is. That's what this uh, analysis is suggesting. And we could do the same thing down here, right? This whole thing is what this is as well. And so you could spend a lot of time sitting uh, and formatting this, but that's what we'd like to do. And the final thing is to make a report out of it. So uh, for the lab, you're going to turn in this Excel sheet along with the other one that you're, that you're going to do for, uh, for to do this on your own for one time. But another thing we can do is if we flip over to a Word doc, we can create a little report. So this will be estimated uh, Corona, or we'll say COVID-19, estimated COVID, fatality rate, fatality rate, um, fatality rate. And then here we could say, oh, well, we're going to have two of them, 4 to 2020. And I'll put in an insert, a table. We'll insert that table and then we can add a plot. And so I will add this plot being a little more, you could add either plot you like. I want, I'm going to add this one because it's got the error bar on it. So um, I'll go ahead and copy that. Or you could take a screenshot of it. In fact, maybe I'll just do that. Take a screenshot of that plot and then I'll plop it in there. And then underneath, I'll write the interpretation. So we are. 95% confident, confident that the true fatality rate of uh, COVID-19 in the U.S. Uh, is uh, between, and then we come back here and fish it out. So we've got 2.3% and 2.4%. Between 2.3% is between don't need the parentheses but we say it that way 2.3 percent and 2.4 percent great so there it is now what i'd like you to do is again style this up as uh as much as you like but then um we're gonna put on here for 7 2020 and we can get updated um information now so what i'd like you to do you might shrink this a little bit so you can get it all on one page but what I'd like you to do is update this. So I'll go ahead and put this on there and insert. You want both of these. So I want you to build this one and then update it here. So then I'll have a two, I'll put a, a two by one uh, table and you're going to come in and change this with some updated information. You're gonna update our uh, calculations as Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci are doing constantly every day and update the plot in here. So you're gonna put a plot and updated plot here. And you're going to um, interpret the confidence interval interval here. And let's go ahead and make it a 95% confidence interval. Why not? 
if you want to make it a different confidence interval, that's fine too. But let's, but sure, if you want, if you want uh, some direction on that, just make it a 95% confidence interval. So you are going to put, you're going to fill in the blanks there, or it's italicized. Um, you're going to build this whole sheet. So just to be clear about that. So then what you're going to submit is two files, this Excel file and this Word doc. And just a little bit on where you might find um, some updated information is, oh, I, I wanted to show you this too. I know my video is going long here, but you can, um, I've updated this slide. So you can go to this website and that'll give you an updated version of these statistics. But then finally, um, what I'd like to do is kind of take you out to um, this place called GitHub. And if you just go, um, I just think it's really important that kind of everybody these days know about what GitHub is. So if you go to GitHub um, and then look at COVID-19, let's see what that brings up. Yep, see the first thing that comes up, GitHub COVID-19 is um, this website where you see GitHub here at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you might've heard that Johns Hopkins University is keeping track of all these statistics. And this is a website Put together called uh, uh, github is a repository of, of where you can put code and data this one's got data and this is the johns hopkins jhu uh, john hopkins university uh, repository for updated data updated almost real time so um so if we uh come over here and go to covid data so cssc covid 19 data and then you come in here and you'll see uh, daily reports and you'll see time series. Go ahead and click on time series. And in here you'll see US and global. And let's go to global, but we wanna look at the US column. If you go to US, it's gonna look at, look at it by city. So you could look up your city if you wanna see the confirmed cases right now in your city or locale, or if you wanna see the total deaths in your city or locale. But confirmed, uh, this is global and we'll look at the US one. So I wanna, um, so what you could do to get that updated data is come over here to the confirmed and it's got all the data and you could go down and just basically come down here and note that you might want to uh yeah well we know that we're in the u.s so there's the u.s and so you're you're gonna have to follow this line but if you kind of click over here right now at the time that i'm looking at it we have about 337,072 cases so uh, without spelling it all out, part of being a statistician, part of being in 2020 and, uh, uh, and knowing statistics is to go out and gather your own data. So um, I'll leave it there. You can come to this one and, re and update your data or go to the John Hopkins and, and look up the data. Should be pretty close. And then uh, you know what to do for the rest of the lab. So great job. I'll leave you with the Excel page. Uh, page. So last time, submit the Excel sheet and submit the Word doc and you're ready to go. Great job. I'll see you in class. See you next time.